Hello and welcome back students to part 4 of our first section in our AS Level Psychology course and today we will be looking at sampling methods. So selecting participants. When conducting an experiment you must choose participants from a population. This is how you get your sample and then you can do tests on your sample and conduct an experiment where you get your results. So in order to collect the sample there's three types of sampling that we have to carry out. Uh, one of the types is random sampling. You can also conduct opportunity sampling or volunteer sampling as well. Okay, so we'll begin with random sampling. Random sampling is where every member of the population has an equal chance in being selected. So this, an example of this would be, you know, picking names out of a hat where everyone has an equal chance. As a result, the plus is that there's no bias. However, not everyone in the population could do the experiment. That is to say, if you're doing an experiment on um, rigorous activities such as weightlifting and you want to see the effect that that may have on fatigue or memory, then obviously if you pick out a someone who may be you know, a little bit older, 90 years old in the population that isn't able to move their muscles in that way anymore or lift heavy weights, then of course they can't take part in the experiment, which you know, uh, means that the sample you take isn't going to be very valid. Also, by chance you may get an inadequate group, which is kind of similar to the following point, but not uh, exactly what I'm trying to say. If you're testing for memory and just by chance you manage to get um, the, you know, a group of Oxford or Cambridge students or people with a very high IQ who you know should have a quite a high memory, um, then of course it's going to be biased because your the population you select aren't going to be varied the participants aren't going to range from you know high end of the popular higher class to lower class and um, one of higher intelligence lower intelligence so it can be I wouldn't say biased because generally is non-biased but if you do get an adequate group then that's not going to reflect uh, clear results now the next type of sampling is opportunity sampling and this is when you select people from the target uh, population sort of at the time so you're allowed to choose whatever members you want to take part in however this does incur bias as um, whether you do it consciously or subconsciously there may be some form of you know discrimination so for example if the um, the scientist who's conducting the experiment uh, is so it may discriminate against a certain race they may not pick them or only pick that race etc so it can be a bit of a problem but you can get the exact custom fit sample to work well with your experiment with so if you don't you know if avoiding that bit of the bias opportunity sampling is quite useful but of course that element of bias is going to bring it down and finally we have volunteer sampling where participant optionally chooses to take part in the experiment so the negative to this is that the location of where the experiment was advertised can give a biased sample. So for example, if you're conducting an experiment to see the effect of memory on people down, you know, across the country, um, and a lot of your people come from London, that, you know, all your, well, all your people come from London, or you're conducting some sort of an experiment that really um, should vary across the nation and you only get a particular sample in one certain place then it, of course it's going to be biased and the plus though is that it is a quick and easy method so despite the um, the problem with the location it can be very quick and easy to carry out so we're moving on to the questions now as always I'd like you to pause try and hide your notes and give these three questions a go and whenever you're ready to hit play you can check the answers Okay, so here are the three answers. If you did get them all three right, congratulations, you should move on to the next video. If not, I would advise you to move back and take down some more notes, check them, or rewind the video to do whatever you can to get them all right next time. So thank you for attending this lesson. Next lesson we will be looking at types of research in section one. And until then, I will see you next time.